The use of FBS is a common criticism of cultivated meat production. But why? What is FBS even? And has the problem maybe been solved already? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Hello world! This is the Impact Investing Show and today we're gonna talk about FBS. And we're gonna mix it up a little. We're gonna visit a friend of mine who can explain FBS much better than I can. We're gonna talk about what FBS is, why it's problematic and about the current state of the industry regarding the use of FBS and its possible replacement. Your time is valuable so feel free to skip around in the video sections if you like. And now let's go visit my friend. Hello Anna. Hello Leonard. This is Anna. She's a longtime friend of mine, worked in a cultivated meat startup, is now working on a growth media alternative to FBS and is also doing her PhD on the topic. So I thought she's the perfect candidate to tell us what's up with FBS. So please, can you tell us something more about FBS? First of all, what is FBS? Sure. So FBS stands for fetal bovine serum and it's used to grow cells. It's a universal supplement that provides hormones, vitamins and growth factors, promoting the growth of various cell types. And can you give us a little bit of info about the history of FBS? Where and why is it used? Sure. So in the late 1950s, Theodore Puck established FBS as a cell culture supplement. In the search for a medium, he discovered that it actually effectively promoted growth of his primary cells. And his publication soon resulted in the widespread use of FBS. So today about 90% of all cells used in cell culture are cultured with FBS. But what makes it so effective? It's a universal supplement containing essential components for cell attachment, proliferation and maintenance. That doesn't sound so bad. Why is it problematic then? First of all, it's an ethical problem. FBS is a byproduct of the meat industry. So immediately after slaughtering a pregnant cow, the fetus is removed, transferred to a sterile location and opened up so the beating heart is accessible. And depending on the amount of blood, it will take up to five minutes until its heart stops beating. So we have to assume that the calves may consciously experience pain and discomfort during blood collection for FBS. Secondly, the availability of FBS is fluctuating. As it's a byproduct of the meat market, our meat consumption rate defines the amount of FBS that is produced and therefore its availability and price. Thirdly, it's very expensive. Half a liter currently costs about $700. So just to give you an idea about the scale, in order to produce one kilogram of meat, you would need several liters of FBS, meaning it's an unviable solution for mass production of cultured meat. Fourthly, it may contain animal-derived pathogens, such as viruses, as well as endotoxins and prions. And this was already discovered by Puck in the 1950s. Lastly, geographical and seasonal variations lead to an inconsistent supply of FBS. And are there any alternatives for FBS? Definitely. In general, there are three main categories of cell catcher supplements. First, animal-derived, like FBS. Second, human-derived. One example is human plated lysate, which is generally produced through plated lysis from expired blood donations. And third, chemically defined, which is a cell-specific cocktail of recombinant growth factors and other essential compounds. And several cultured meat companies have already successfully replaced FBS with chemically defined formulations. That sounds awesome. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. Thank you, Leonard. Okay, so we're back in the studio. Let's do a quick recap of what we learned from Anna. So we know that FBS, fetal bovine serum, is a very powerful growth medium that is useful for the cultivation of many different cell lines and cell types, and it's used throughout the industry for development of these products. But it is also produced in a very gruesome way, it's extremely expensive and has many other problems regarding inconsistencies from batch to batch, for example, or the robustness of the supply. But Anna also mentioned something at the end, that there are many companies that don't even use FBS anymore. Now that's really interesting, so let's get a look into that. The first and obvious example here would of course be Mosameet. The Dutch company just recently published a peer-reviewed academic paper outlining their new formulation for a chemically defined medium for the differentiation process. So this is a great step, because not only did they manage to replace FBS entirely for their differentiation process, but also published their findings and their formulation publicly, so that other industry leaders and other stakeholders and other companies can profit from that and learn from that. 
Blue Nalu, a company focusing on cultivating seafood and fish, also has in their principles that they will never bring a product to market which uses FBS. Eat Just is one of the more famous companies from the cultivated meat space because their cultivated chicken nuggets are already on sale in a restaurant in Singapore. And they have developed their chicken to be grown without FBS as well. Now granted their chicken nuggets that are currently on sale in Singapore still use FBS for production, but they have managed to produce the same nuggets without FBS, but the regulation process is not through yet, so the currently sold product still uses FBS, but in the future will be replaced with a serum-free alternative. There is also Upside Foods, who have developed their own entirely animal-free growth medium as well. Then there is Aleph Farms. They have partnered with the company Wecker and use fermentation to produce growth medium, again entirely animal-free. And this cooperation is a non-exclusive agreement, meaning the growth medium that they develop through fermentation will be available to other companies from the cultivated meat space as well. Cellmeat from South Korea even reported that their FBS alternative lets the cells grow 250% faster than the FBS version. Then there are Meatable and Finless Foods, who also said in interviews that their products will be free of FBS in the future. Shiok Meats also says that their products will be entirely free of any animal-derived products as well. There is Super Meat as well and Avon Meats and many more companies that I didn't list here now that don't use FBS anymore. And I really don't know of any company that plans to use FBS in their final product, simply because it's too expensive and because of all the other problems we have mentioned before. So it's pretty much common standard in the industry to work on an FBS replacement if you even use FBS. So that is basically a no-brainer that every company needs to wean off FBS and use alternatives, probably usually chemically defined versions of growth medium, to develop their products, especially if they ever want to produce at scale. But wait, it gets better. There are entire companies focused on the production of growth media alternatives to FBS. One of these companies is PL Bioscience here from Germany. They produced their product ELARM, which is basically HPL, so human platelet lysate, which as you may remember is the second category of the cell culture supplements that Anna mentioned. Using an HPL technology like ELARM has many advantages over the traditional FBS approach. First and foremost, there is a high number of growth factors in these new media, so they can be used for cell culture. Secondly, they are much safer, because you don't run the risk of getting animal-derived pathogens or prions in your product. And thirdly, the lot-to-lot -lot variability is much smaller, meaning that you can reproduce your results much better than with FBS, which may be slightly different from each batch to the next. There is also BifTech, who are working on a patent-pending microorganism-based growth medium to support the growth of muscle stem cells. Then there is the company Maltes Media and their product Proliferum. Proliferum is optimized for mammalian cell proliferation and optimized for performance across different cell lines, just like FBS. Then there are companies like Seawith and Back of the Yard Algae Sciences, who use algae to produce their growth medium, which is also entirely animal product free. There is Future Fields from Canada, who only produce the growth factors, which can then be used to create your own chemically defined growth medium. Similar to Tiamat, who produce their growth factors in plants, and say that they can reduce the price by a factor of 1000 in the near future. But there is also Orf Genetics from Iceland, who offer plant-based growth factors as well. And then there's the company MP Biomedicals with their product FastGrow, which is already used as an animal-free, chemically defined growth medium replacement for FBS. And I'm sure there are many companies that I've missed, both in terms of companies that don't use growth media anymore for their cultivated meat, but also in terms of companies that produce growth media or growth factors. So if you happen to hear of any of those companies that I have not mentioned, drop them in the comments so all of us can learn about them. So what can we conclude from all of this? FBS, fetal bovine serum, is a universally supplied growth medium for the proliferation and differentiation of cells and cell cultures. It's basically what the cells rely on for nutrients and energy during their growth phase. But FBS is harvested from unborn calves directly after the slaughter of the mother cow, so it brings with it enormous ethical issues. But there are more problems, like the insane cost of FBS, the batch variability, the supply chain inconsistencies, and the always looming danger of contamination from pathogens and prions. But there are many good news as well. 
There are many companies that don't rely on FBS anymore and I'm not aware of a single company that plans to use FBS in their final products beyond their research and development stage. And there are even companies focused entirely on the production of growth media alternatives or growth factors from plants, from algae and even from fermentation. So while the use of FBS may have been a valid concern for cultivated meat companies in the past, it is not anymore. These companies have set out right from the start to replace FBS because it was instantly clear that it's never going to be a viable solution for mass production. And they have largely succeeded in replacing FBS already, usually using chemically defined growth media alternatives. So the industry standard at this point is really animal free growth media already. And I think pointing out the use of FBS in cultivated meat as a major downturn and a major problem is really an outdated criticism at this point. So that's it about FBS. If you have remarks or questions on the topic, leave them down in the comments so we can start a discussion. Thanks to Anna for the great input in the video and all the explanations. And if you're interested in more videos on the cultivated meat space or fermentation of alternative proteins and the investment opportunities in the space, stick around, like and subscribe and all that stuff. And because there's so much more to learn, I will see you in the next one.